Mud that sounded like a duck when he squished it. Yes, it was duck mud. Huh? He knew he didn't squish that quack out. He had discovered self-quacking duck mud. <laughs> okay, it wasn't duck mud. There were real ducks. Ducks. See, George, I told you it was great weather for ducks. <laughs> You're going to be busy, George. Have fun. Jumpy Squirrel suddenly became aware of two things the rain had stopped. And that hairy duck looked familiar. <laughs> Jumpy Squirrel usually jumped away from anything new. Peking Duck was the same way. Maybe that's why they became good friends instantly. George played by the puddle all day. He even had ducks in his dreams. I always knew you were meant to be a duck. Have a nice flight. For centuries, people have wondered what squirrels dream about. The next morning, George raced out for another day with puddle ducks. Something was wrong. The puddle was smaller, a lot smaller. George? <laughs> Wow, that puddle sure shrunk. <laughs> well, puddles soak into the ground. They don't last forever. <laughs> ducks go where there's plenty of water. When the water's gone, they'll leave. It's just what ducks do. <laughs> You want to come with me to mend fences at the Rankins? Or play with the ducks before they go? <coughs> okay, I, I won't be too long. <laughs> when the water was gone, there'd be no more ducks, and there was nothing George could do about it. Nothing he could do. <coughs> if ducks wanted water, then water they would have. Hey, George! <laughs> Maybe the puddle water was soaking into the ground, but the water in George's pool wasn't. Ah. 
but he wanted to be the best, so he kept practicing. You ever thrown a surprise party for Mr. Quint before? Well, it's the only way to give him a party. Because they're such a big family? Exactly. I'm watching for Mr. Quint's boat. No sign of him. Oh, you don't have to watch yet, Bill. He won't be back for at least two hours. Whoa! It's not my birthday, George. I'm not supposed to get surprised. <laughs> He's home early. No. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> oh, take him to your house and keep him there till party time. <laughs> not yet, George. Well, hey there, young fellas. Ooh, looks like you sprung a leak. Bad luck today, huh? Well, not all bad. Got to see part of the river I never saw before. <laughs> the bottom. Well, I gotta change my soggy socks. Oh, uh, uh, don't! I, I mean, come to our house. <laughs> we want to build a fish pond and need expert advice about fish. Uh, well, sure. Well, let me just get some dry clothes. Here, dry clothes. Go help him. All right, Mother, if you say so. Huh? No quint can resist fish crackers. They may come in handy. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Have fun. So George and the man with the yellow hat kept Mr. Quint busy with lots of questions. What do you think? <laughs> well, if you make a pond that big, you can have almost any size fish. As George was about to ask exactly how many whales he could have, Mr. Quint's brother, Flint Quint, showed up. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, hi. George, it's Mr. Quint's brother, the train station master. Hey, Clint, happy birthday. Hey, Flint, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, didn't you know the Quints were born together? So Flint can't know about the party either, okay? The Quints were twins. Now George had two people to yell surprise at. It couldn't get any better. You know, I said you needed help, so I came right over. Well, this here's fish business, not trains, so you can weigh anchor. I'll meet you back at my house. Uh, don't go! Uh, uh, we want to know about running a train around the pond we're planning. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's Mrs. Quint. Disaster. The bakery truck broke down, so they can't deliver the birthday cake. Don't worry. I, I can go pick it up. Oh, thank you. It's at Mr. Pescado's bakery over in Franklin Square. You can't run tracks across the pond. It'll scare the fish. Well, then we'll just have to tunnel. Guys, could you monkey sit for me while I run an errand? Uh, sure. We'll just figure out the pond while you're gone. <laughs> George, it's your job to keep the quince here so the surprise isn't wrecked, okay? <laughs> George knew this would be easy, because the Quint brothers would probably argue about the pond for hours. Well, we've got it all worked out. The perfect pond and train. <gasps> so we'll monkey sit you at my house where we could draw up plans. <laughs> George had to keep the quints here. It was important. The surprise. Fish crackers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, um, we could have fish crackers here and then go to my house. That's a good idea. Eating this many crackers would keep the quince here a long time.
Fortunately, George and the man with the yellow hat were heading out on a tropical vacation. The bags were packed, the tickets were in place. Yes, the man with the yellow hat had taken care of everything. Except setting the alarm. Oh, George, we overslept? Where is the other? Hold. We made it. Hawaii, here we come. Oh, oh here, George. Ah, this will make it easier. <laughs> well, hello, little fella. <laughs> and then George saw it his first airplane. A free gift for you. Thanks for flying Kona carriers. <laughs> he liked this airport already. Wow, George, I can't believe our luck. No line. What are the chances of that? Pretty good, since all the planes are grounded. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry? Haven't you heard the weather forecast? Oh, no, the <laughs> alarm didn't go off, and then I had to pack my monkey. <laughs> what a cute little monkey. Bad news. Ooh. Our plane's delayed. Big storm in Chicago. <laughs> well, they're not sure. The snow might let up a bit, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm sorry. <laughs> Waiting was fine by George. After all, he had a brand new toy plane to keep him busy. Only... <gasps> his toy plane was gone. He'd left it right here on a red suitcase. Ooh. Let's find a place to sit. It's gonna be a while. George didn't want to bother the man with the yellow hat about his lost toy. He had the real plane to worry about. But George couldn't stop thinking about it. Where could his toy plane have gone? How about I see if I can find a coloring book for you? <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Stay put. And then it hit him. If he found that red suitcase, he'd probably find his toy plane, too. One important rule of travel, if you jump on a moving sidewalk, make sure it's going the same way you want to go. But no matter how fast George went, that suitcase went faster. Would the parent or guardian of a little lost monkey please report to the information desk? Oh, I can't thank you enough. Not a problem. How about we check on our flight again? <laughs> oh dear, it says here your plane might be canceled altogether. Oh. <laughs> it was just like a real carousel, only longer. Coat, boots, uh -huh. hat, uh -huh. mi 
mittens. <laughs> I'd say you're all ready. <laughs> First rule for playing in snow. You've got to get out the door. I'm kind of tired, George. Hey, why don't you play while I make hot cocoa? I think we have just enough left for two cups. <laughs> Playing in snow, then finishing off the good hot cocoa? This was going to be a perfect day. <laughs> Here was all this fresh snow just itching to be played with, but it was too deep for George. Hey, George! <laughs> Guess a city kid wouldn't have seen cross-country skis before. It's the most fun way to travel on deep snow. I've got an old pair of skis you can have. Want to come with me? <laughs> This was fun. George took to skiing like, like a monkey to skiing. Think you can handle that big hill? <laughs> With skis on, George could go anywhere there was snow. <laughs> or so he thought. Attack a steep hill straight on like that, George. You gotta zigzag it. When you stop, angle your skis like this so you don't slide back down. Yeah, that's it. George, that's the way to do it. George had a great view up here. He could see houses and farms. <laughs> and there was his house. And then he thought he'd better head home right now because the man was making the last of the cocoa. And no one can resist the drink-me-now power of cocoa. Not even the man with the yellow hat. I wonder what that could be. Uh, I'm gonna go take a quick look around. You wait here. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't good. He was getting even further from home. it was all downhill from here. He figured he'd be home in seconds. Morning, Mr. Rankins. And to George, one great thing about fresh dairy products was the cows.
Mmm, <laughs> Leslie sure likes you. <laughs> well, happy cows give more milk, so please stay as long as you like. Does that sound like fun, George? <laughs> okay, <laughs> remember, be a good little monkey. <laughs> George really liked cows. <laughs> no one else he knew was that big, that friendly, and gave milk. <laughs> it seemed like Jumpy Squirrel must have had food stored everywhere. George had never seen so many colors anywhere else but in his crayon box. And they smell better than crayons. George wanted to share his discovery. After all, who doesn't like to smell nice flowers? George tried telling her to be a good little cow. Leslie obviously didn't speak monkey. So, George tried to speak cow. Cows were coming. Maybe this whole field had once been filled with beautiful flowers, and they'd already eaten the rest. George had to act fast before these flowers became a big bovine buffet. Unfortunately, cows don't understand arrows. He tried to distract them by juggling apples. But the cows ate his act. So George borrowed an old scarecrow and turned it into a frightening scare cow. night, George thought hard about ways to save the flowers. What he needed was some way to keep the cows away from the flowers. Hey, are the Rinkins putting a new wall across their cow pasture? That was the answer. A wall would keep the cows out of the flowers, and the flowers out of the cows. The next day, George got an early start. It was good to smell the flowers again. But half of them were gone. No doubt in a cow's stomach. Or two. The cow's morning milking would soon be over and they'd be hungry. George's wall worked well against a squirrel. Now, here came the real test. George had successfully hidden the flowers from the cows. And that meant George wouldn't be around to mess up his lobby. Okay. You keep track of everything we pass so we don't get lost. 
And I'll watch the compass so we know which direction we're walking. <laughs> the first rule of camping is always pick a good campsite. <laughs> All right, these stakes will anchor our tent. Can you put them in the ground? Put a mallet in your pack. A good camper must be ready for anything. <laughs> we'll build a fire a safe distance from the tent. You gather some dead wood off the ground, okay? <laughs> Good job, George. Okay, stand back. <laughs> George's wood made a perfect fire. Perfect for staying warm and perfect for cooking marshmallows. The next morning, George emerged from the tent ready for anything. Well, anything but. Time to go home, George. <laughs> I don't know when we'll camp again, but soon, I promise, soon. An expert camper is always ready. Mm, no, George. So for the next week, George wore his backpack. All the time. Everywhere. <laughs> no, George. Soon. But soon never came. Poor George. I don't know when I'll be able to take him camping again. Gee, I haven't gone camping in years. Hey, maybe that's what Hundley and I should do on our next day off. Camp! And George can come too. Oh, that would be great. George, would you like to go camping with Hundley? <laughs> <laughs> As an expert camper, George was happy to show Hundley some of his tools. <laughs> but knowing that George had a hammer only made Hundley nervous. Forget your compass, George. The auto navigator will guide us. should be as good a spot as any since we've got the trailer. <laughs> George couldn't find a tent anywhere. Pretty cushy, huh? Oh, you won't need that pack. We got everything right here. Hunley wondered if anyone ever vacuumed this place. And were those ants on his paw? Plus TV and microwave, all powered by a rooftop solar panel. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha
<laughs> to keep his lobby orderly, Hunley always kept a close eye on George. <laughs> I wish I had your energy, George. <laughs> Just watching George made Hunley tired. <laughs> Hello, Professor Wiseman. <laughs> Hi. What do you have, George? Your favorite kind of dinosaur? <laughs> oh, that's your favorite. But they're the same. Those are the bones that would be inside that. You know, same as the bones in you. <laughs> Feel your arm. The hard part? That's bone. It's your skeleton. Now that he knew he had one of those under his face, George had to see the T-Rex skull up close. Uh, George, don't, it isn't safe. It... Oh. Are you okay? George always wanted to ride in an ambulance, but he couldn't really enjoy it. At the hospital, Dr. Baker decided they needed to see George's leg bone by taking an x-ray. Well, that's a small break. We have to put your leg in a cast. <laughs> now this cast will keep your leg from moving while the bone heals. Oh. <laughs> hey, that looks like George. <laughs> Hunley knew what to do when he heard that name. <laughs> he got ready to defend the dignity of his lobby. Poor little guy. Is he all right? Oh, yeah, but he's gonna be out of action for weeks. No jumping. No noise. Hunley wasn't so sure this was George. Well, hello. You have a visitor, George. It was George, all right. No one else in the building smelled like that. Hello? Hunley come up here? Yeah, uh, we're in George's room. You know, in the lobby, Hunley pays more attention to George than anyone. That's friendship. Uh, Hunley could keep George company when you go to work. I'd excuse him from his lobby duties. George? Would you like Hunley to be your monkey sitter? Uh -huh. Hunley was curious about this new, calm George. Good morning. The next morning, Hunley showed up right on time. Of course. Uh -huh. Everything you need is here. Thanks, Hunley. Oh. To Hunley, seeing George wide awake and sitting peacefully was like seeing rain falling up. George's leg ached, so it was time to get a new cold ice pack. Don't worry, George. We'll sound better. We're just warming up.
All right, let's get started. A five, a six, seven, and eight. Um, George, this practice is for band members only. That's the rule. <laughs> A five, six, seven, and eight. <laughs> couldn't play in this band, George would start his own. First, he'd need an instrument. You can't play with my tuba, George. It's a very delicate instrument. Have a good practice? Great. You don't want to miss this concert. The doorman's ring of keys sounded a lot like a tambourine. I'll start lunch. Do you feel like a Giardino burger, George? George needed to find something to put all of his keys on so they could jingle in the right way. <laughs> Lunch is almost ready, George. Have you seen the hall closet key anywhere? I know I have a box of old keys that I don't use anymore. You can play with them. <laughs> George realized there were musical sounds everywhere. <laughs> Do you want to make instruments with the recycling, too? I think you have enough for an orchestra here, George. <laughs> George and the man with the yellow hat washed his future instruments. <laughs> I don't think so, George. Those are the lids for my best pots. wasn't sure what instruments he was making, but he knew what he liked. Store to buy some rice. We seem to be out. Nice sound. What did you use for 